since starting Powerhouse Women, I had just been going nonstop. I had held on to too many things that I loved and they really served a purpose at one point, but I wasn't listening to that nudge that it was time to move on and focus my energy in a more concentrated way on the things that I really wanted to pour my heart and soul into. Today, I'm coming to you with a little recap of how our goal in 2023 and really our motto to do less and do it better, how that actually worked out and whether or not it was worth it. So I'm excited to break this down for you because if you have listened to the podcast at all, you've heard myself, you've heard Hannah talking about how last year we just had this, I don't know, it's just like this intuition that we really wanted to focus in on doing less, meaning fewer quantity of things in the business so that we could focus in on doing the things that we were giving our time and our energy to with excellence. And it all started a few months into the year. So this wasn't even something that we took into all of 2023, but I remember being at her house in San Diego. We were doing one of our quarterly planning meetings. I think this was in May, so it was pretty good chunk into 2023. And we had been talking about this intention of do less and do it better. And I remember we sat down with these giant sheets of paper and we just really asked ourselves one question. If we could start Powerhouse Women all over again, it didn't have to be anything, any specific offerings. No one knew what it was. What would we be most excited to start? and to grow. And right off the top of my head, the first things, not even my head, it was like a gut response, was the event and the podcast. And we really just kind of sat with that for a little while. And what it started to show us was that the way our business was set up was that a lot of our income was coming from these different buckets that we love And we love to show up and serve people in. But at the end of the day, the ones that we were most excited about growing and scaling the event and this podcast weren't necessarily being treated as the things that we really wanted to scale in a big way. Because they were just the things that were sharing attention and sharing our focus with three to four other offers. And it made us realize that we were at a point in the business where we really had a choice to make. And some of you might be at a similar place in your business right now where you're ready to really go all in on a few things, maybe even just one core thing. And that can feel really scary. If you're anything like me, I had a lot of fear come up, number one, around How are we going to financially support our growing team if we started to cut back and cut revenue streams? Would I be letting all of you down? Would I be disappointing people who were really counting on us to show up and to serve them in that way? And maybe you have this fear show up too. Okay, what, what happens to my clients who I adore if I decide to scale back and I'm not showing up for them in that way anymore? And then there was a lot of identity. A lot of my identity was tied up in how validating it is for me to be able to serve and to be able to know that I'm great at what I do and to be able to see the transformation in people's lives. But it sent us on this journey of really asking ourselves, okay, what does do less and do it better really mean for us? If that's actually our motto, that should be what decides our strategy moving forward. And the moment that in black and white, staring back at us on these giant sheets of paper was ultimately the answer to what we wanted to create and how we want to impact all of you through our events and through our podcast. And that's not to say we won't do anything else, but like those were the two main things that we wanted to be our full focus it made us realize that 
that was going to create a different strategy for the following months, the following years, then had we answered something different. So the first thing that we did was even before this conversation, we had decided not to run a year long mastermind. It was a very profitable, it was our highest revenue generating offer at that point, generating over six figures, over multiple six figures. And that was kind of our first test into doing less and doing it better. That was a decision we made at the end of the previous year, heading into 2023. So we already knew we had some lost revenue to make up for. Plus, we were adding two new members of our team and just investing a lot more heavily into the business. So as we started to get into the spring and when we had this particular conversation I'm sharing with you, we started to ask ourselves the question of, okay, well, what does it look like to go all in on the event and to the podcast? The event at at this time also involves our Six Figure School launch, which is our signature 12 week mentorship program that gets launched out of the event. So we knew that if we really honed in on that offer stack, if you will, growing our podcast, which is where a lot of new people find us, it's where people, just feel connected to the community and they decide to get plugged in more and maybe attend an event. And then of course, some are ready to invest in, you know, things like a mentorship program, like Six Figure School. So we knew that if we really focused in on tightening up and doing that pathway with excellence, really honing in on growing the podcast, really focusing on growing the event in a significant way that it would then impact one of now with removing the mastermind, what would be our largest revenue stream, which is our six figure school course. And what was really cool to see is the impact immediately on that launch and on the event itself. When we removed something that took a lot of our time and energy, which even though we loved it, We removed the not just hosting of a mastermind, but we also didn't join a mastermind last year, essentially buying back six weeks out of our year where we would be gone on either retreats for masterminds that we were a part of or retreats that we were hosting, not to mention all the Zoom calls and content that I was planning. So what I started to realize right away was the benefit in not focusing on showing up for so many different spaces and different people. In the past, I was creating different content for our masterminds, different content for our girl gang membership, different content for the event, for the podcast, and then for Six Figure School. And it was just a lot. It was a lot of mental energy. I loved it. But as I started to pause and ask myself, okay, where am I making the biggest impact? And where do I really feel like my skills and my gifts are being used the best. That was where it led us to this conversation. So right away, going into our event season, we had our biggest event ever, over 600 people in the room, over, I think we had like 1,200 or it might've been more who claimed their free virtual ticket. So it was a huge boost to our email list. We grew the community by thousands just by really honing in on putting our energy behind making this the best event launch we've ever had. We made some big changes to our six figure school launch. And what was so cool is by not having to show up in as many places, being able to give more thought and intention to the six figure school launch that comes with the event, that it felt a lot easier this launch. I wasn't writing a bunch of copy. We had redone a lot of the copy and content the year before. So we really got to rinse and repeat a lot of the systems we had already created. And we grew our launch year over year by 50%. You guys, that is crazy growth. Usually when you get up into the multiple six figure launches, I mean, any growth is incredible, but to grow a launch by 50% using zero ads, this is all organic traffic is pretty much unheard of. So we knew we were really onto something because we were starting to see the fruits of not putting our time and energy into as many different things and instead focusing on doing the things that we wanted to do with excellence. Then after the event, we had already made the decision, but we were executing on the very, very tough decision to also close the doors for our Girl Gang membership. And 
to really trust that by saying no to something that was so good and so beautiful and one of, again, my favorite places to serve, number one, it was making space for someone else to step up and to create community and to show up and create things like weekly calls for people to connect. That just because I was stepping back from doing that doesn't mean that that I'm directly disappointing everyone and not meeting their need, it actually creates space for someone else to step up and someone else who feels called to create community to meet that need. And it was about October once we had finally wrapped up and here's now the second huge revenue stream that we had closed, I for the first time had space, like actual space. And I don't think until that point I realized how much for the last six years prior since starting Powerhouse Women, I had just been going nonstop. And there's nothing wrong with that. I actually have a very high energy level for pouring into the things that I love. But along the way, I had held on to too many things that I loved and they really served a purpose at one point, but I wasn't listening to that nudge that it was time to move on and focus my energy in a more concentrated way on the things that I really wanted to pour my heart and soul into. And I've talked a little bit on other episodes about how it also gave me space to do some emotional processing to really get quiet and get clear about the person I wanted to be. And it really gave me time to nurture my marriage and so many other beautiful blessings came from it. But I was really curious to see, once all was said and done, what would this motto, to do less and do it better, actually look like in our bottom line at the end of the year? And like I said, this wasn't actually even a full year of doing less. This was the year of closing down things so we could actually be in a season of doing less and doing it better. I was really curious to see, would this actually impact the business financially? Like, were we actually going to earn less money? Were we going to completely derail the whole business by making these financial decisions? I mean, it was a big risk. But at the end of the year, and I'm just now in the early part of 2024 recording this, we're reviewing our numbers for last year. And the first thing that really surprised me, number one on paper, glaring back at me so clearly, was that the business overall actually did grow. We actually increased our overall revenue, even though we cut back on over six figures in offers, things that we would have offered before, but we decided not to. And I mean, there's all different ways to look at numbers. We decreased in profitability because we made some additional investments into team members and investing more into the business, which I'm super proud of and super excited about. But overall, the business actually still grew. And it was kind of wild to see because I think so much of this process for me has also been about really looking at my relationship with money and where I'm still blocking myself from experiencing the abundance that I know I desire. And I think this is an ongoing journey that I don't know if there's ever an end to because there's always another opportunity for growth. But it was really cool to see that. Second thing was how I felt. And I think this is the piece that is more sacred to me than anything else is that I feel so much more present in my business. I feel so much more on purpose, working every single day on the things that I am uniquely gifted at, not running around doing so many different things and pulling my attention in a million different directions. I feel more focused, way less scattered. I feel a lot more peace in my body, in my nervous system, and I actually feel more abundant. And I think a lot of that came from sitting with and confronting any of the fears that came up around, you know, saying no to something that was really good. There was actually no justification for closing it other than we really felt like we were supposed to and we were supposed to go all, go all in on other things. But to actually sit on the other side and realize that that intuition was right, that Listening to it has actually opened up more emotional freedom, 
and more emotional presence and groundedness. It's allowed me to connect even deeper with the people that I am serving and with all of you who listen to the podcast, who attend our events. And it overall, I think, has made the business so much more streamlined. And I think even going forward with some of the things that we know we're going to keep implementing this year, it's just going to become more and more aligned with the ultimate vision that we see for the impact that we want to make. And it really started by just, you know, asking ourselves that question, if we could start all over today, what do we really want to put our energy behind? What's the top one, maybe two things max that you want to go all in on, that you want to be known for? And at the end of the day, I had to be honest with myself that my ultimate vision isn't to be known as someone who's making a big impact in the coaching space. It's why I don't do any one-on-one coaching. I really rarely do like outside coaching offers beyond six-figure school. And then it's allowed us to go all in on creating more live experiences, adding things like the expanders retreat, really growing the powerhouse women event for 2024. It's going to be our biggest event ever. And it's just allowed me to distinguish the difference between something that's good, but it's a no and how something feels when it's great and it's a hell yes. Because when you can distinguish the difference between those, making decisions in your business becomes a whole lot easier. So at the end of a year of, I wouldn't even say it was a whole year of doing less and doing it better, it was a year of asking ourselves, okay, what does that actually mean? Now coming into a year where we're actively living the realization of doing less and doing it better, doing fewer things with more excellence. What I can honestly say is I wish someone would have shared this vision and kind of like the after the scary part, what it could look like when we were standing at the beginning of this journey, wondering if we were going to bomb the whole business by making these decisions. Like if we cut back all this revenue, are we are we essentially like killing the business? I really wish someone would have shared with me this view so that maybe you're feeling this way too. Maybe you're sitting with this feeling that you want to scale back. You want to do less and do it with more excellence. But there's a financial risk to that. Maybe there's an identity risk to that or fear of disappointing people. And you just need to hear someone say, do it. (laughs) You just need to hear someone say, really listen to that. And I want to be clear that we didn't just start slashing revenue streams left and right. We really carefully looked at our numbers. Everything we do is very founded in and based in the numbers. So we really know and we hone in on our business numbers, our expenses, what are the revenue streams that we're bringing in. And then we created a backup plan. And this is this is how we created a little bit of emotional safety for ourselves to move forward with making this decision without being in fear. Because I I do think there's something to be said about creating the environment where energetically you're not in scarcity and fear. All I had to do in order to kind of set my mind at ease so that I wasn't moving forward into this, doing less and doing it better with fear, was I just created a backup plan. So if we absolutely needed to bring in some more cash into the business, I just wrote a list of like, okay, here's 10 things I could do. I could offer this or I could take on some one-on-one clients or, you know, there are so many different ways I could serve that would bring in money if we absolutely need to. And then we set that list aside and moved forward with the trust and with the knowing that our intuition is almost never wrong. If we're actually getting quiet, we're clearing space to listen to it. Our intuition is always guiding us back to our highest and best. And it takes courage to listen to that because it often is going to take you down a path that is unfamiliar and it's going to challenge you. It's going to force you to grow. But if this is resonating with you, if you are in a season where you could even just be starting out, but you really want to keep things simple, you want to go all in on one or two very clear things and do them with excellence. Or you could be kind of where I was, where you built up this business, where you realized that some things had to be shed in order for you to step into the next season powerfully. No matter where you find yourself, I want to leave you with a couple of questions to just ponder 
to really get to the heart of what your version of doing less and doing it better, doing it with excellence, really looks like. Because I think that if we can all really hone in on our answers to these questions, I think this is where our greatest impact lies. And I think the money follows that. You know, there are so many different ways in this day and age to earn money. There's so many different business models. You could think of 10 in the next 10 minutes if you tried. So where we find ourselves too attached to one way of doing things is actually just limiting the possibilities that are all around us. It's actually cutting us off from opportunities that might be all around us. And so I'm going to end with these questions, but it reminded me to share some of the other things that have really come with clearing space, things we've been able to say yes to that before we wouldn't have had space for. One of them being Hannah and I are advisors on the board for a brand new AI company. We're getting to like really make a difference on the cutting edge of technology, sharing what we know about building community and really growing a following for a mission. And that's something we wouldn't have had time or space to do, much less both of us do together. And it's been such an expansive experience. It's also elevating our whole community because now we can say, you know, the powerhouse women community is aligned with this tech company. We're not in the tech industry. So what are you cutting yourself off from? What are the possibilities that you can't say yes to or they're not even coming your way because you haven't listened to that little still small voice that's saying, clear a little bit of space. It's going to be okay. And quite honestly, Here's at least how I feel. I still feel like we are clearing space for something big, like really big, and I don't know what it is yet. So this year, we're still keeping space clear. We're doing things with excellence. We're really reinvesting in the podcast. We're focusing our energy on on creating the biggest Powerhouse Women event we've ever had. And there's just so much more that I'm excited for. But I'm still clear that this is a year to clear space. So I'm looking at how in my every day, you know, day to day, can I clear space on a daily basis? What are the things that I don't need to be doing anymore? The tasks, the activities during my week that I don't need to be doing? And how can I get even more excellent at the ones that I am doing? So let me leave you with those questions because this is ultimately, I think, where to start. If you've gotten this far in this episode, something tells me that there's going to be something for you on the other side of answering these questions for yourself and just be open to whatever comes to mind. So give yourself some space, write down these questions, and then, you know, give yourself a couple of minutes to really free write anything that comes up as you ponder these questions. And don't hold back. Don't filter it. Just see what your deeper inner knowing is trying to tell you about how you could be doing less and doing it better. So the first question is, what do you want to be known for? Like, what do you most want to be known for in this world? What's the impact you want to make? How do you want to make that impact? So what is it that you want to be known for? Number one. And then the second one is, where do you want to become excellent this year? Where do you want to become excellent this year? I guess this is just one long question, but it's actually two parts. So what do you want to be known for? The second one is where do you want to become excellent? And then what do you need to give up in order to make more space for that? What do you want to be known for? What do you want to be excellent at? And what do you need to give up in order to make space to go all in on that? I would really love to hear your answers. So if we aren't already text friends, you can join our text community. I personally read all of these texts. And yes, if you get an answer back, there's like a little automated response right in the beginning. And then everything from there is a personal message from me. So send me your answer. What did this episode kind of highlight for you as far as some changes that you really want to make this year? And just remember, like I said, it doesn't have to happen overnight. You know, it took us months to really kind of unravel and sit with the decision and carefully and very thoughtfully start to work our way in alignment 
with our motto to do less and do it better. So the number to text me if you aren't already on our text community is 602-536-7829. Just text me the word mentor and what it, you'll get a, a weekly message. I just send a little business or a mindset tip, just a little reminder from my heart to yours to stay in the game to just feel like you're less alone in this crazy journey of chasing our big dreams. So if you want to receive those texts and then also the place to send me your takeaways from this episode is to text me the word mentor to the number 602-536-7829. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.